surprise when it comes to supersizing and growing your business. Sharon Hornell here. I can't see a thing out of these glasses. So I don't know why I ever even put them on. It's pretty funny nowadays, but they're an old pair of my glasses. Our idiom, our expression today comes from the American Civil Rights Movement. And a woman by the name of Alice Wine adapted a song, an old yeah. song called Keep Your Hand on the Plow and change it to keep your eyes on the prize as part of the civil rights movement in the 1950s and 60s here in America. And it was performed at the Newport Music Festival in 1958 by, I want to say, Mel Mahelia Jackson. I'm sure I'm messing up the name pronunciation and Duke Ellington, as well as it's a reminder for us to concentrate on our goal, concentrate on what it is that we want. And I was talking to one of my coaching students about this yesterday. You gotta focus on what you want because the person kept bringing up the past and challenges of the past and why they weren't as successful as they figured they should be at their young old age, the ripe old age of their early thirties. And we have to remember that if we're focusing on what we don't want, we're creating more of that in our life. If we focus on what we do want, the goal, the objective, where we're going, the vision of where we're taking our business, that's what we move toward. We'll move toward what we pay attention to, what we think about, what we believe, what we feel strongly about, what we want, right? If we're thinking about what we want, if we're thinking about what we don't want, we're creating more of that. So we want to avoid that like the plague. So I was thinking about what is the prize and do I have my eye on the overarching big prize of what I want? And uh, I'm going to say, yes, I do. Does it slip off sometimes just like the person I was talking to yesterday? Absolutely. But the faster I can bring myself back to focusing on what I want, the more I'm moving toward that. Uh, I have a, a, a thing, it's a tool I learned from a, a woman by the name of Lynn Grabhorn following my sudden cardiac arrest. I was studying and learning a lot of stuff about how to think differently, how to take better care of myself, et cetera. And one of my mentors, Jim Edwards, recommended the book, uh, Excuse Me, Your Life Is Waiting. And the workbook in particular that goes along with that book uh, in terms of flow and there's a, a technique in there called flip switching. So as soon as I catch myself thinking something negative or that I don't want, I flip the switch just like we would flip a light switch to focus and think about what I do want. Because I know whatever I'm thinking about, I'm moving toward that. And I want to be moving toward what I want as much as humanly possible, right? We all have moments of negativity, moments of negative thought, no, moments of judgment and not creating what we want. But we want to make sure we have a lot more moments that we are moving toward what we want. So I actually really like this idiom. I'm, I don't love where it came from. I mean, the civil rights movement was very important in the United States. But it wasn't a great time for American history. Uh, sometimes I feel like we're, we're creating more, we, not we in meaning, including me, but I feel like our country and especially our politicians for their own reasons are creating more of this tension within the people of the United States. And I don't think it's really there. I think there's always been pockets of prejudice. There always will be. There's always been pockets of inappropriate behavior. There always will be. But the vast majority of us in the United States are awesome people. And we need to remember that and treat people the way we want to be treated. And we will be just fine, despite what the media and the politicians and some activists try to pretend or tell us we're like. We actually are amazing, wonderful, incredible human beings. We just need to remember that again, focusing on what we want, not on what we don't want. So I couldn't think of a prize like as we're thinking about keeping our eye on the price, the overall what it is that we're trying to create with our business, we also need to remember to celebrate and reward ourselves sometimes. So what is the prize for you? For me, it's changed a lot over time. It used to be stuff, right? I wanted a, a big, great house. I had my big, great house. And then I decided I didn't want that anymore because it was a ton of time and energy and wasted effort. I wanted fancy cars and clothes and everything. Now I just kind of put on whatever I feel like putting on because it's not that important to me. And I find that people and relationships and experiences are more important to me. Changing people's lives is more important to me than accumulating more stuff, right? Uh, I, I have friends that talk about um, and share all of their awards and all of their uh, certificates and, and degrees and things. And I'm like, I don't even talk about that stuff anymore. I don't remember the last time I talked about my education, my degrees because or my certificates. I lost count of, I'd have to dig out a file, which is about, it's a whole file drawer now, of all the different programs and things and that I've learned and certif 
vacations that I've gotten. That Guess what? It doesn't matter. I don't care about them at all. It just means I did something and learned something. But what's important is how can I share that? How can I use that to create what I want to see in the world? All right. Have an awesome day. Love to know your take on this particular idiom. Eyes on the prize. I always think of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Violet Beauregard's mom telling her, keep your eye on the prize, Violet. And then she blows up into this great big blueberry and, and loses her opportunity to get Charlie's Chocolate Factory anyway. Or Willy Wonka's Charlie gets the Chocolate Factory. Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Obviously, haven't seen the movie in a while. Granddaughters aren't quite old enough. The youngest granddaughters, oldest one we've watched it with but the youngest ones aren't old enough for it yet. So I'm sure soon we'll be watching Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory because they're great movies, right? They're fun movies. All right, tell me how you uh, feel about this particular idiom or expression and how you're using it to build and grow your business. Guys, I'll be with you tomorrow with another one. So we can talk about what, some, what it means, where it came from, and how you feel to apply it to your business right now. Have an awesome day.